Hi, I'm Randy Fulmer, producer on Chicken Little. And I'm Mark Dindle, the director. Cut. Back to one. Hey, this is... Uh... Cut, cut, cut. Hi, I'm Randy Fulmer, producer on Chicken Little. Hi, I'm Mark Dindle. You're the director. I'm the director, yeah. And we're going to go around day in the life. We're going to meet all our artists and show you what they're up to. Come Here on, we go. Let's go. Disney Legacy is all about memorable characters, great storytelling, fantastic eye-popping visuals, and emotional music. And our goal was to take all of these elements and pour them into Chicken Little. The original fable of Chicken Little is this. Chicken Little gets hit on the head with an acorn. He thinks it's a piece of the sky. He creates panic throughout the community saying the sky is falling and gets revealed to be an idiot because he thought the sky was falling. We had pitched Chicken Little as a concept with a little girl character. We felt a girl is more vulnerable than a boy, more unlikely as a character to save the world. I said, sky can't fall, sky can't fall, sky can't fall. The original story of Chicken Little as a girl was a character who had this overactive imagination and she always thought something scary was going to happen. That is not a vampire rising from his coffin. That is just a house settling. <laughs> oh, what was that? About a year and a half into working on the movie, uh, we, we went across the street and showed it to Michael Eisner. But Mr. Hornsby had a vision. And Michael, the very first time he said, I think Chicken Little would be more interesting as a boy. Then he felt if you're small, that's a bigger problem for a boy than a girl. What if I joined the baseball team? Ah! Girls can be small, and that's not considered a huge problem. I don't know. I'm an easy target. You've got much more if you've got this little guy who's got something to prove, whose dad doesn't believe in him. You gotta believe me this time. And since he is our boss, he won. He won that argument. The same sort of ideas went from one version to the other. At the end of the day, all of the anxiety and energy that went into creating this Disney version of the old Chicken Little Fable was really, really worth it, because we ended up with a movie that we really love. The main thing that inspired the design was just classic proportions that are cute and vulnerable, and that is a larger head, these innocent eyes. It's really baby proportions. Chicken Little really is a 12, 13 year old. He's just small for his size. I, I, I put on five ounces this year. I've really bulked up. Hence the name. Chicken Little. So I really kind of poured myself into the character. What are we talking about? I really kind of acted out, how would I say that? You know, how would the character Chicken Little say that? You know, and combine the two. That Thanks for the chance. chance. <laughs> Mark Dindle brought in some old Walt Disney animated shorts that were made in the 40s and 50s. He said, this is the stuff that I love. This is what I want it to look and feel like. I think the style of animation on Chicken Little is, is a cartoony style. One of the things I got from, from looking at that was how much fun it was. When the character walks across the stage, it's done with gusto and attitude, and it's, it's squashing and stretching, and I wanted to try and capture that in the style of animation for Chicken Little. Here we've got a whole studio of these um, animators that are now animating 3D animation, but we have such a heritage of 2D animation, we figured out ways to introduce drawing right back into the process, and there it is. The animation, we figured out ways to introduce animating 3D animation, but we have such a heritage of 2D animation, we figured out ways to introduce drawing right back into the process, and there it is. Ah! Well, squash and stretches is, is an old uh, animation, 2D animation term to get uh, elasticity into a character drawing. There's a great example of the use of squash and stretch in the movie. Goosey grabs Chicken Little by the head, bounces him up and down, fires him like an arrow against the window, he flattens, and then he starts to flop down that window. And it's all about how squashy and stretchy the characters are. It was really important for us to keep that 2D sensibility because it's part of our legacy. I think animators, when they come to Disney, look back first. To look back at the standards that have been set in, in some of the best animation the world has ever seen. 3D animation is different 
in that the animator is working with a digital puppet. He manipulates a computer-generated puppet with tons of controls and bones and, um, and wires and all of these different things, but it's, it's done on the computer. I knew it! You've got to think about rotations and joints and each part of the character has a certain rig and a certain control that makes it move. 3D characters are able to convey subtle acting moments better than 2D characters. You have a finer detail of facial expression available with 3D. It wasn't an acorn, it was, it was a piece of the sky, really it was. I love animating things that you didn't think that we could bring to life, like a talking chicken. There was definitely talking. That's what I get the most amount of joy from. What 3D offers us is an opportunity to make your characters that much more believable. Walt was always about using technology in the service of telling a story. And I think if Walt Disney were alive today, he would absolutely embrace this medium. This is what 